1860s, the advent of the ironclad warship saw numerous firsts, and quite often these took place in unexpected locations. In this particular case, there was an increasing chance of war, again, between Denmark and Prussia. In a previous conflict, the Danish navy had managed to shut down all enemy shipping, and in the era of the ironclad, a new ship was sought in order to maintain this supremacy. Whilst the USS Monitor had seen the launch of the first turreted warship, there were two main competing forms of turrets. The Ericsson turret, as seen on the US ship, and the Coles turret, designed by one Captain Cowper Coles, which was being installed on a number of ships under construction in the early 1860s. Whilst not the first ship designed and laid down with such an armament, the Rolf Kraker would be the first ship with this particular armament to be launched and commissioned into service. The ship was relatively small, at just under 1400 tonnes, and had a relatively low freeboard, leading to some designating her as a monitor, along with a number of follow-on Danish warships. But collapsible bulwarks raised this for transit and all actions outside of battle, and as well as a single shaft 700 horsepower power plant, she carried a schooner rig of sail, giving her true long-range oceanic operational capability at a design top speed of just over 10 knots, rendering her a small but effective ironclad. In Danish, the terms tower ship, turret ship, or armoured ship uh, were also sometimes applied. Her armament was fairly simple. The two Coles turrets each carried a pair of 68 pound high velocity guns, and the bow also carried a ram. The turrets were turned manually by a gearing system which needed around about 12 men in order to work at full speed. Like HMS Warrior, her belt was 4.5 inches thick, although the wooden backing was thinner at 8 inches, whilst the turrets carried a complex layered system of wood and thin iron plate behind a similar 4.5 inch thick outer plate that approximately matched the belt protection of the much larger British ironclad. This armour belt was 8 foot high and extended equally above and below the waterline, protecting the hull generally and the machinery spaces specifically from piercing shots. Named for a legendary Danish king from the 6th century, Rolf Kraker was laid down in 1862 at the Govan shipyards in Glasgow, Scotland, and launched in May 1863, commissioned in July, at the cost of £71,200, which was to be paid off in five instalments, and did not include the ship's guns, which were supplied elsewhere. Her crew were duly dispatched aboard the steamer Yeza to find somewhat amusing rumours that the ship was actually being built for the Confederate Navy. Since her compact size, heavy protection, and ocean-going capability would make her an especially dangerous opponent for the Union's monitor force. This in turn led to rumours that the ship would be seized in port by British authorities, much as later in the same year two other turreted ramships with collapsible bulwarks and a sail plan would be, in order to enter the Royal Navy service as HMS Wyvern and HMS Scorpion. The Danish solution to all of this was simply to lie very low, say nothing other than to hoist the Danish flag, and then sail promptly for home as soon as possible after some quick covert communications with the UK government. To be extra safe, the Rolf Kraker was advertised as just sailing out to conduct a few acceptance trials just offshore, but upon sailing out, they just kept going and going and going until they disappeared over the horizon, albeit that this did mean a few minor parts of the ship were not quite finished, and the actual handover trials had to be done somewhat rest retrospectively in Denmark. In these trials, it was found that the ship wasn't quite as fast as they'd wanted, only making around eight to nine knots, and as a result of correspondence to this effect, the Napier company offered a new screw propeller to improve the ship's speed, which then needed to be shipped over to Copenhagen for fitting. These exercises also noted that despite her small size, the accommodations for the officers and men were actually quite spacious, and also made note of an interesting feature of the fuel supply. The bunkers were fore and aft of the machinery spaces, and were connected by a small rail system, with carts similar to that found in coal mines, which allowed the coal to be moved between bunkers easily, as well as transported to the boilers with relatively little effort. 
Perhaps due to the weight of the sailing rig, the ship actually sat quite deep in the water, which limited her use in coastal shallows, but nonetheless she was called into action the following year when Prussia and Denmark went to war. As the Prussian army advanced, the Rolf Kraker was assigned to destroy a pontoon bridge that the Prussians had built to outflank the Danes. As she did this, Prussian field artillery opened up from three sides, resulting in over 150 separate hits. Although the turret roof, which consisted of a metal grid rather than a solid cover, did let in the shrapnel that resulted in three slight injuries, that was the extent of the casualties. One of the turrets was also temporarily disabled by a heavy shot that knocked it somewhat askew, but the ship proved incredibly resilient, weathering the storm and proceeding to single-handedly repulse another Prussian advance by dint of firing 68-pound high-explosive shells into the advancing Prussian columns with complete impunity. However, a third attack on the Danish positions was simply too numerous for the ship to turn back alone, and one of the many shots fired at her in that engagement ploughed through the thinly protected deck and caused significant damage when it exploded inside. After the war, she would be repaired and would be given a number of armament refits over the succeeding decades until being taken out of service in 1893 and then expended as a target for newer vessels. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.